Hey everyone, welcome to The Huddle and thanks for taking some time to, uh, to watch and listen. I'm here with one of our store managers, Carvon, who is a new store manager in El Dorado, Arkansas. He's been there for three months, just came in from the Dallas market where he did a lot of exciting things we're gonna talk about. And it is really great to have some time with you because I want people who are watching, listening to hear your story. Yes, sir. So let's talk about you. Yes, sir. Where are you from? I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. The inner city. Inner city, St. Louis. Yes. Grew up there. Born and raised. Um, and then I moved to Little Rock, Arkansas in 2012. Mm -hmm. So originally I attended, uh, moved to Arkansas for college. I attended a small HBCU by Philander, Philander Smith College. And then shortly after um, I graduated with my bachelor's in business administration, um, I started Walmart in 2015, um, just looking for a part-time job, nothing really serious. And I'm a shoe fanatic, so I always wanted to invest in shoes. And that ended up being a career now. That's my story. Well, shoes are expensive, much. so yeah. yeah, you gotta work a lot. Yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> you gotta work a lot. Yes, sir. We, we have that in common. I, I started also uh, at Walmart in college thinking I would do maybe a summer or two. Mm -hmm. That was about 30 years ago. So I've done 30 summers, I guess, since then. And All right. fell in love with the company. Um, but go back to, to 2015, mm -hmm. start, graduated. And once you graduated, what happened next? So I started off in maintenance um, in 2015. Um, shortly after I graduated, I had an opportunity to promote. Um, I've always done good under, under pressure, so they've always given me extra assignments in my role. So I had an opportunity to promote to a stock two team lead mm -hmm. at the time. Um, shortly after that, I did for about six months and then I became a stock one supervisor at another facility in Arkansas, Mar Marmel, Arkansas. And then from Marmel, I had an opportunity to move to Dallas, Texas and work at a couple stores. Um, that's where the peak of my career started um, as a salary manager. I became a uh, intro to an assistant manager role over Pearl and Home Lines. Did somebody ask you to do that or did you ask to go to Dallas? I actually asked to go. Um, it was a it was a fire and desire that I saw that I knew Texas has been a, a lot of new innovative things is happening at the time. So I wanted to jump and see what chances I have to make an impact with those. Got it. I like that fire and desire. Yes. Yeah, is that something you say a lot? Yeah, that's that's the underlying in my career right now. Fire and desire. Right fire now. and desire. Love yes. It. Love it. So you get to Texas get to see a different market. So mm -hmm. St. Louis, Little Rock, Texas, Dallas um, mm -hmm. specifically, um, start learning about innovation. And then uh, yes. a few months ago, decided it was time that you're ready to start applying for store managers. Yes. Store manager um, roles. I had an opportunity prom um, to promote next, um, looked at a couple stores and um, this one stood out the most because Arkansas is home. Just had the chance to come back and really make the impact that I've learned from Walmart out here. So um, took, El Dorado, and I'm three three months in right now. Uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. So El Dorado, nice town. Yes. Uh, agriculture, a lot of, a lot of ag around you, yes. obviously, and some other industries in town, yes, oil sir. petroleum, other things. So go back to um, deciding that you were going to take the supervisory role, mm -hmm. and if you string that from that decision, that offer, all the way to now, what you're doing, what are things you'd you'd want people to know if you want to do what you've done, Carvon? What would those be like? What, what are the traits that, that you think have helped you? I think the key element behind that is really finding your niche. What do you like to do and what are you strong at doing uh, while you're working on the things that you're going to improve within yourself? Uh, one thing is I found Walmart being my niche. Um, I found the passion of uh, merchandising, selling and things that all evolved around what Walmart was pushing at the time. And that pushed me to continue to grow with this company. Um, the opportunity is there. I've always told um, the story that the company have the opportunity. It's for you to take advantage of it. Um, and the benefits behind that is just being very knowledgeable of who you influence and who can influence you. Um, I've, I'm a firm believer in, in every role that I'm continuing to grow within and learn from is that I want to surround myself with people smarter than me so that I can learn from them and I continue to elevate. So that will be some of the advice that I would give um, is to continue to adapt to people who know a little bit more so that you can learn it and then you can find your niche into how you want to do it. Yeah, I like that idea, the idea of figuring out what you're good at and try to be great at it. Yes. Don't try to be great at the things you're not good at. Yes. Be great at the things you're good at. Yes. And then second, having people around you that smarter than you really well said. Yes. Because they, the, the people in our facilities are experts at what they do and most of what we go through Someone has been through it before, knows right. how to handle it, and they can teach us. Um, on your team, 
and mm -hmm. uh, just you, you as a leader, mm -hmm. you know, how, how do you manage through the tough times? Because in every day and dealing with the public and right. a large team, it's not all easy. So how do you handle adversity in the tough days and how do you stay positive and stay motivated? So some of the things I'm taking away from today and just in general um, is one, have your three meetings a day. <laughs> That's very important because one, you get to inform every shift of what your goals and priorities are. But then in those meetings, bring recognition. What are we rewarding and excited about? What are the new things that's happening? What are the anniversaries and birthdays that we are really pushing? You know, um, it's a big deal when you make a year or a month or a week with Walmart. That's a big deal to a lot of people because now they have a feeling of owning something with this company. So those are the things that I would love to continue to push and what I've learned within my career especially through those hard times, being very positive about that. So bringing those recognitions is a big key to that for positive mindset during those dark times. Yeah, and those, those meetings, they go so, it just goes so far and you can't over communicate as a leader. And sometimes you have to, sometimes you may feel like you're communicating things over and over and over and that's okay yes. uh, because it's a different audience. Each of the three meetings, different shift and they may yes. not have heard it or had a day off. So repetition matters. Um, and I love this idea of ownership. Yes. You got to push ownership and the team has to own it and you own your facility. And when you get ownership, you get somebody who truly owns what you want. That's right. And it, it could start from cart pushers all the way up to store manager. Everybody owns something and in ownership is role clarity. Everybody have a role that they make important to the store. So right. those two words are really big. So last thing I remember uh, when I was a new store manager and I came here to the for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd started a month before my first year beginning meeting as a store manager. I remember this feeling when I got back of, you know, where, where is everybody? Where are mm -hmm. they going to help? And it's, it's a bit of a daunting feeling when you realize, oh, that's me. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody else. That, have you gone through that or felt like that? Not yet. Um, I have not okay. felt that yet. Um, hopefully <laughs> I don't feel that when I do go back. Um, I think I have a great team. Um, and I've always given that recognition and praise to the associates and the people who I've been fortunate enough to be a leader to uh, because they've helped me grow within my career. Um, yeah. So I haven't had that feeling just yet. Um, I'm hope, hoping hope that don't. I, I, did, hope I, did that I don't. Um, um, but it was an opportunity to just really share that feedback that they do phenomenal. Um, but it's also about how you lead them to help you be phenomenal. It is. And, and the things that people end up doing surprise you just yesterday. Yes. I was talking to one of our market managers who runs the Jacksonville, Florida market, Cedric mm -hmm. Utley, and he was an assistant manager at the store I went to when I became a new store manager. Oh, wow. It's just rewarding after 20 plus years to see people that you've worked with that have done so well. Well, look, we're super proud of you. Yes, um, thank it's you. It's been great to get to know you a little bit today. And for everyone out there, um, Carvon and others are just examples of what's possible here at Walmart. You said there are yes, sir. endless possibilities. Yes, sir. And that's and true. A, and the good feeling behind that is just people who helped develop me also see me in my role now. So that's a rewarding feeling for them for as them. well. Yeah, you yes. got to so. pay it forward. Yes. Pay it for the next so. person. All right, thanks everybody. We'll see you soon.